Hey there, Vanelli here from photofocus.com. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna use the fencing prints to show you how I use Luminar in my portrait workflow. So this is part of a course I'm working on, which is building a creative and efficient workflow. Now the first thing we're gonna work on is the eyes. Now in doing that, I'll show you how Luminar uses filters to create these enhancements. We'll use a develop filter to enhance the overall image. Then I'll teach you more about adjustment brushes. We'll use a structure filter to add clarity to the image, a layer mask, and then we'll finish off with the brightness and contrast filters just to bring out the image of the eye much more. Then we'll go on to working on the skin, sculpturing the face, and removing blemishes. This will teach the concepts of a global change versus a local change. And then I'll introduce you to the Orton Effect Filter. This is an amazing filter that Luminar has. It's gonna enhance the skin and it's gonna add softness and sharpness at the same time. And it's gonna have an incredible effect on the skin itself. We'll use some of the traditional filters to sculpture the face and that's our dodge and burn tool. And then we'll finish off removing any blemishes with the erase tool. Once we're done, I'll show you how we're gonna add a few finishing touches just to make the image pop. And in doing this, we'll learn about presets. We'll enhance the uniform. I'll introduce you to the saturation and the vibrancy filter. And we'll finish off increasing the highlights and the shadows. Let's get started. Now we're gonna open up the fencing prints inside Luminar. So I'm here at the home screen. If I don't see the adjustment layer palette, I'll just click on the icon up here, and now I have my layers. And this Add Filters is gonna bring up the Filters palette. Good, let's start with the Develop Filter. Now I'm gonna apply this filter to the base layer. So I'll click on Develop, and here we're gonna make a global change to the entire image. I'm gonna leave the exposure and contrast where they're at. I wanna dial back some of the highlights. I'll increase the shadows to bring out the hair. I'm going to dial back the whites just a touch and then for the blacks I want to enrich it and I'll slide that off to a negative value. Bump up the clarity just a touch and here we are. So we started with a good image and now just with a few adjustments we were able to bring the image or develop the image a little bit better. Now we're ready to focus strictly on the eyes. So from here we just did a global change that affected the entire image. Now we want to do a local change and affect just the eyes. So I'm going to come over here to the layers palette and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. So all the effects will be applied to this particular layer. Now I can always go back. Here's the base layer and here's the layer that we're going to apply the filters to just the eyes. And in doing this, we're going to use the structure filter. So the structure filter can be found under the essentials category. Now, if you want to know exactly what these filters are doing, just click on the information icon, hover your mouse over the filter itself, and it's going to tell you exactly what this filter is doing. Now, the structure filter is going to enhance clarity and the micro contrast in the surface areas between the edges detected in the image. Well, basically, it's going to make the image look a lot sharper. I'm gonna shut this off for a moment and let's click on structure. Now remember, we're only looking at the eyes. When I apply the amount to 100%, everything gets affected. That's the global change we talked about. Focus your eyes just on the subject's eyes. So I'm gonna bring it back just a touch. Good. And for sharpness, or for softness rather, I wanna dial that way back because I want this to be a very sharp, dramatic look to the eyes. And boost is gonna give me an extra strength to the filter. We're at about, the actual 50% default actually is really good. Now, here we are with that filter. We applied it globally to the entire image. Well, let's click on the filter brush, and now we're gonna apply the effect only to areas in this image that I want this extra sharpness to. So let's click on paint. 
and at 100% opacity, I'm going to adjust my brush, my paintbrush size, by using the left or right bracket keys. Left will make it smaller, right will make it larger. Now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to paint over the areas I want extra sharp. We'll do the eyes. I want the eyelashes sharp. Good. That's it. Uh, the eyebrows. Let's not forget the nostrils because that area needs to be sharp. And of course the lips. Now, if this person had an earring, I would make the earrings look sharp and anything in the image that I want that extra sharpness to. Now looking at this, I really like what it's doing to the eyes. It's a little overboard on the, um, eye, on the eyebrows and on the lips. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and change the opacity to about, let's say 75%. Now if I click on the erase tool, I wanna paint out the effect. So check the visibility icon of the mask itself. What's in red is gonna show me where the filter is being applied. And anything without red shows the filter is not being applied. Well, since we lower the opacity, this ruby red, that's gonna show me the intensity that I'm applying the filter at. So let's increase the brush size just a touch. And I'm gonna paint out some of the effect on his eyebrows. I like it on the nostrils. And just a little bit on the lips. And I'll, I'll remove the mask. And here's before and after. Now if I come up here, I can click on this icon and it'll show me the before and after since I started the edit. Or I can come over here to either the layers or to the brush and each one of them has its own visibility icon. So I'll click on this visibility icon and watch what it's doing to the eyes, eyebrows, nose, and lips. Ooh, that looks really good. But you know what? I wanna paint out just a little bit here on the eye, above the eyebrow, above the eyelashes. And I'll click done when I'm finished. Let's zoom out just a bit. Looking at the effect at a distance, it looks way overdone. That's okay. Structure has a bad habit of making the image a little too dark. So this is where we're gonna apply another filter. And the filter we're gonna apply is the brightness and contrast. And we're gonna come down here to utilities and under the utility category, we'll see the brightness and contrast. The neat thing about adjustment layers is I can add as many filters as I want to the particular layer. So here is our brightness and contrast, same concept. Don't look at anything else except the eyes. Let's increase the brightness. And for contrast, instead of going to the right, let's take away some of the contrast on the eyes. Good, click on the filter brush. We're gonna paint in the effect. And this time, make sure we stay just on the iris itself. There it is. Here's the mask we just applied. And click done when we're finished. Ooh, that looks great. Now, when I zoom out, notice the overall effect itself is a little too intense. It doesn't match the rest of the image. Well, by putting two of the filters on the same layer, I have options. I could individually change these filters here to increase the strength or decrease the strength. By using the layers opacity, I'm able to apply the exact amount to both of the filters. What I like to do in a case like this is I like to go back to zero and notice nothing is applied to the image. And then I'm gonna dial it back in. Good, and I'll just keep going back and forth until it looks good right about here. Oh, go back just a little bit more. There we go. Good. Once again, here's before, here's after. Let me zoom in a little bit better for you. Before, after. Now that we have the eye set, let's tackle the skin. Zoom out a bit. I'm gonna put the skin on its own adjustment layer. So click on the plus icon, add a new adjustment layer. The filter we're gonna use is the Orton filter. 
So let's click on the information icon and we're gonna find that filter under the creative category. We'll come down to it and it's gonna give us a description. This filter is gonna allow enhancements to an image that include glow and focus. Ready for this? It's gonna produce a photo that's sharp and blurry at the same time. <laughs> that's like sweet and sour sauce. It's doing two functions in one that's gonna come up with a really cool special effect. So let's apply it. And just to see what it's doing, let's go to an extreme. And here's the extreme. Once again, we're only gonna focus on the skin and I really like what it's doing to the hair. Let's dial it back a bit. Now this particular filter gives you two options or two types. Here's type one, here's type two. It's entirely up to you on which one you'd prefer. From here, I'm gonna stick with type one. I like the amount and I'm gonna just up the brightness just a little bit. Great. Good, dial it back down just a little. And remember, I'm only looking at the skin and the hair. See what contrast does? Oh, I'm gonna double click to bring it back to the default. Good, let's dial back the saturation just a little bit. Great. And again, the skin and the hair is what I'm looking at. So I'll click on the filter brush and I have to make a decision. So we just made a global change. The entire image was affected. Now I wanna do a local change. So I wanna apply the Orton effect selectively to this image. Do I wanna paint in or paint out the effect? Well, here, I don't have that much to paint in, so I'll use paint. If I had less to paint, or if I had more to paint in, then I would choose to click on Erase. So here we are. Again, left and right bracket keys will make the brush larger or smaller. I'm gonna paint at 100% opacity and I'll apply it to the skin to see what I'm doing. Let's click on the visibility icon. I wanna stay away from the eyelashes or the eyes and the eyebrows. I'll stay away from the nostrils and of course the lips. Good. There we go. Now, if I get a little carried away, I can always come back and erase the effect. But before I do that, I want to apply the effect to the hair, but I don't want it to be 100%. So I'm gonna dial the opacity down, let's say at about 75%, increase my brush size, and paint just the hair. Great. I'll click on erase at 100%. I'll erase some of the overspill. There we have it. Ooh, that's looking really good. And I'll click done when I'm finished. So let's see what the effect did. I'm gonna click on the visibility icon of that particular layer. So I turned off the effect and I turned it on. There's that softness and sharpness at the same time. Now the next part is to sculpture the face. We'll click on the plus icon and add a new adjustment layer. Click on filter. We're gonna come under the professional category and we'll select dodge and burn. Now, once I click start painting, I'll have a choice to either lighten the image or darken it. We wanna darken it, painting at 100% strength. It's gonna be way overkill, but I just wanna see where I'm painting. I'm gonna come around the face and just sculpture it and make it dark. Next, I'll hit erase, and I'm gonna change this to about maybe 60 or 58%. Now what I wanna do is increase my brush size really large, and this is gonna help me feather the effect just a bit. I just wanna paint out some of that sharp, or some of that darkness. Great, so now I, can exact, now I can see exactly where 
the effect is being applied and I'll click done. So here's before and after. Now that's way overdone. That's okay because we have it on its own layer. What we're going to do is click on opacity and this particular look sculpture in the face is usually best when it's applied very, very subtly. So I'm going to go all the way to zero. Here, here it is at 100%. I'm going to bounce back and forth until it's there just barely. Right about there. So the effect is applied, but it's not overboard. So here's before, here's after. Look what it's doing. Just that little extra is bringing focus right to the face. Now we're gonna work on removing blemishes. Well, <laughs> this is a young child. He has no blemishes on his face. The concept of what I'm gonna show you right now will work if you were to have wrinkles or you know uh, blemishes on his skin. What we're gonna do is come over to the tools palette and we're gonna click on erase. Now, since I don't have a whole lot of blemishes here, we'll pretend that this little water spot on his glove is a blemish. So I want to paint on the affected area and red is going to show me that I'm adding it to this area. Then when I'm done, I'll click on erase and boom, it erased the effect. Here it is before and after, before and after. It does an incredible job and I'll click done. Now here's a little tip. If this were wrinkles on the skin or bags under the eyes, you don't want to remove it at 100% because then it's going to look fake. If this were again were a wrinkle or bags under the eyes, I would come up under the opacity of that particular layer and I would dial it back down and then dial it in slightly. So look at the change it's making. So at 100% down and I would slightly just fade it in to where again if it, these were wrinkles it would be there what it would bring back some of the wrinkles to make it look more natural. For this image we want to erase it at 100%. Now to finish off let's just look at the image at full screen by pressing F as a keyboard shortcut it will enhance the image to full screen and remove the workspace. Now what we want to do is enhance the uniform, desaturate the overall image, and just do a few more fine tuning adjustments. This is a perfect time to teach you about presets. So to get to the presets, I'm gonna click on the preset icon here. And from here, Luminar ships with over 80 presets built right in. Presets are just filters combined together to create a special look. So to give you an example of that, let's go to an extreme. I'll click on dramatic and I'm gonna come down here and let's click on this dramatic grunge. If I come over to the right, you'll see exactly what filters were used to create this effect. They use dramatic, clarity and structure and combine those together with these settings to make this effect itself. Well, that looks great. I can come over here and select a different preset and notice it changes it here. Uh, let's click on a different one. Great. That looks good. And I could dial it back if I want. And that's going to affect all the filters inside this preset. Now, once you get the preset looking the way you like and you're learning on what each of these filters are doing. So if I were to come over here to the Im image radiance and I hide it, it's actually showing me what that particular filter is doing and having an effect on the overall image itself. So once you learn what each of these filters are doing and how they work together, you can come down here and click save filter preset and now make this your own. Well, that's what I did when I created this custom preset. So this custom preset I'm using is from my sports grit collection. Now, I really like what it's doing to the, to the bottom half of the image. The face, not so much for this particular image. I wanna dial it back just a touch. 
And I like the uniform looking great at 61%. But you know what? I really like the face at 0%. So I'm going to do a global change. And I'm going to affect the entire image here. That looks good. Now what I'm going to do is come back and erase the effect on his face. Well, instead of coming over and using each of these filter brushes, we have it on its own layer. So by having it on its own layer, now I'm able to paint out the effect. So let's click on the layer brush and at 100% select erase and let's paint out the effect just on his face here. Good. Let's check where we're going. Good. Everything in red is going to show us that the filter is being applied to that area. Everything I can see, the effect is not being applied. Good. And select done when we're finished. Here's before. Here's after. Look at the change it's making right to the uniform and it's not affecting the face itself. Let's create another adjustment layer. Now on this layer, I'm going to hide this down here. For this layer, I want to change the overall color of the image itself. So I'm going to come up here to the essential category and we're going to select saturation and vibrancy. Click on the information icon. And if we hover over that filter, it's telling us saturation adjusts the intensity of all the colors in the photo. Now vibrancy is only going to adjust the intensity of the muted colors, ignoring well saturated colors. Well, that's exactly what we want to do. We want saturation. If we bring it to a negative value, it'll make the image look black and white. If we bring it to a positive value, it oversaturates the colors. We want to bring it back just a bit, but now we want to increase the vibrancy. So instead of a negative value, we want a positive value, and we want to bring out the muted colors. And this is where it's a game of finesse, where I add to one, I take away a little bit from the other, until you get the image looking the exact way you want right about here. So here's before, here's after. Look at the glove right over here. I love what it's doing to the glove. Here's before, there's after. Great. Now let's bump up the highlights and the shadows just a touch. I can still stay on the same layer because I'm not making a huge change or I'm not using the layer brush to make any changes. So under Utilities, let's come down to Highlights and Shadows. And once again, hover over it with the Information icon selected. Highlights and Shadows are going to provide adjustments for the highlights and the shadows by changing the brightness of each region independently. So what's neat about this filter is I'm able to adjust independently the brightest brights of the image and the darkest parts of the image. I want to dial it back just a little bit. Good. And then for the shadows, I want to bring it out just a touch. But if I go too far, it's going to bring out the background. So I just want just a little bit to get that hair right in here to have shape. And again, everything we're doing up to this point is just minor changes that adds to the overall image look. That looks really good. Now let's add just one more filter. So we'll create an adjustment layer. This filter is going to become your best friend and that's the Accent AI filter. Let's see what it's doing. So the Accent AI filter is going to make smart enhancements with the help of artificial intelligence. So the filter it's going to analyze your image overall, and then it's going to make the necessary adjustments to make the image just look natural. So let's try that. So we're going to click, it on, click on the filter. Here's the strength at 100%. 
we want to bring it back and just apply a little bit of it right about here. Great, and I love what it's doing up to the hair. Now I'm going to bring it back just a touch. Great, and now that we have it on its own layer, we can still use the adjust the layer brush or the filter brush to paint out the effect on the background or areas that we don't like. So here's what the image looks like full screen. So I'm really liking how the image is looking. There you have my entire workflow on a portrait retouching and we use the fencing prints. As a recap, we enhance the eyes. We worked on the skin, sculpturing the face and removed blemishes. And then we added a finishing touch just to bring out the extra detail in each of the image. I'm Vanelli for Photo Focus. Thanks for watching.